Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So this time about five years ago, I was getting ready to print and bind and finally hand in my PhD thesis. And so I thought it would be nice to kind of talk through what happens because I didn't even know what was going to happen really. After I went to the printers and the binders, I just kind of went with it and I learned so much as I was going along. And I thought I would share with you guys what happens, how you actually print and bind the thesis. That is, well, how many pages is this? That is like 200 and something pages. How that actually happens in a process. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. So to give a bit of backstory, once you finish writing your thesis, for me, it took me six months of writing. Once you finish writing, you actually have to print and bind your thesis. Now, those first couple of copies go to the examiner. So you have an external examiner who's outside of your university, outside of your institution, and you have an internal examiner who is within your institution. So you need to print and bind at least two copies of your thesis to begin with, and then you would print and bind another copy towards the end. Now, before I did this, what I actually did, and I would highly recommend this, and I'll probably do a whole video on this, is to print a, a slightly smaller version of your thesis. But what I did was I printed it on four, like four pages per page. And so what the reason for this is because it allows me to kind of quickly scan and edit my thesis before I print it out in you know full blown A4. Now this also allows you to do a bit of a viva revision and make sure that everything looks good as a whole. So essentially what you'll see is that I kind of have like highlighted, you can quickly scan the images, make sure they all look good because when you're looking at things on a screen all day every day, it can get quite boring, quite repetitive, and actually what you end up doing is kind of like skipping sections and not really looking at it. So I'd highly recommend before you actually print and bind your thesis is to print it out in another sort of like just quick copy. I quick, I just bound this in university, so this could probably cost me like a pound or two, but printing it out with four pages on one page, hopefully you guys can see this, it's a little bit small. If you prefer, you can always do two pages on one page, but it just gives you a quick overview and I'll do a video in the future about how you can actually use this mini thesis to revise for your viva as well as actually editing your thesis as well so going back to the thesis so this is what it looks like as you can see here you have like this gold lettering here on the side and it has phd it has the year so 2017 and it has your surname and your name so that's what it looks like this gold lettering and the even the color, this blue, like beautiful, like rich royal blue color, and um, it's all dictated by your university. So a different university will have a different, may have a different color, may have different requirements here in terms of the font size, font itself, even different departments. I've seen other university within the same university, other departments having slightly different looking PhD thesis. So don't be alarmed if yours looks different. When you go to the binders, you'll just tell them what university you go to, what department it is, and they will know exactly how to bind and how to get your thesis looking beautiful like this so in terms of cost it is pretty pricey and i have my invoice here so i paid on the first of august it's very pricey so i got two copies of soft blue so this the actual cover itself is a soft cover not so hard because the hard cover would obviously be more expensive and i got it for a two-day service so that means that that comes back within two days you can get it quicker than that or slower than that and that would obviously change the cost and then i also got two so i got 71 pages in color and I got 150 pages in black and white. And this again impacts the cost. So the more color pages that you have, the more expensive it's gonna be. But I would recommend not skimping out on the price based on color because especially when it comes to a thesis like mine where you have a lot of like graphs. So let me try to go to a page that has a graph. And loads of colors like this, we have like graphs it's really important that you have got the color there because it's visually appealing and it it makes more sense to the reader also be aware of people that may have color blindness so when you are choosing the colors that you include within your graph and within your images within your charts do make sure that they are colors that someone who has color blindness would be able to differentiate so yeah and then single-sided so again you want to make sure that your thesis is bound single-sided which again adds so many pages to the thesis like it didn't have to be single-sided but it is and then over here it's really cool they've got like the spine lettering so they've written on the side here what exactly you want on the spine so I've got PhD 2017 and then Yonis AY so this was my actually this was my final copy that I printed again a few months later so I did another two copies so in total it's 111 pounds and 80 pence quite expensive so the other thing to note is that the actual text itself is the spaces between the lines are about 1.5 spacing and this is a 
again, although it does add so much bulk to the thesis, what it means is that when your examiner is reading your thesis, they are able to make some scribbles and they are able to write some points in between. It just makes things a lot, a lot nicer on the eye because you can imagine someone reading a massive thesis, lots of writing, lots of text that's just like single spacing. It would, it would be very difficult to read. And so you can see a lot of my thesis has lots of scribbles inside it and you do end up getting them back. So the two copies get sent to your examiners. So you go to the graduate school, you submit them, and I've got a little stamp here in the corner. It gets, it gets submitted to the examiners. One goes to your internal examiner, as I mentioned, and one goes to your external examiner, and then they take they can take as long as they want really but usually they get it back to you within a few weeks slash months get it back to you and then you look at it and you find all the scribbles there and you find all their questions and things to think about because don't forget that when you submit your thesis this is actually your first copy this is not your final copy so this copy that i have in my hand here is not the exact copy that ended up being like finally submitted this is the first draft. And so what that means is that when you're reading through the thesis, they have questions that they are going to be asking you or they want you to consider during your viva, which will be in a few weeks slash months time. So do take a look at each page one by one and do think about the things that they've asked you. And you may be alarmed by how many questions and how many scribbles and how many like question marks they are, there are. But to be honest, a lot of it is like them thinking out loud and them trying to put that thought onto paper. The other thing that you might want to do, you might want to consider is attaching videos now i don't know if your universities have a specific way of doing this but when i did it i simply just bought a usb and i downloaded all of the videos that i had on my file uploaded it onto the usb and i stuck it into this little pocket so at the front of my thesis i have this like those doc that document kind of pocket and i stuck it inside here and it meant that this went to my examiner alongside the usb and they were able to watch the videos of my cells and, and my microscopy stuff now it's probably not the best way of doing it now i probably recommend sending them a link to a drive or something along those lines but do confirm with them if you want to send video which i would highly recommend especially if you know you spent so many months years working on those videos getting those images it would be a really nice idea to crop out some of those videos and when you do mention them link them into your actual writing itself and say video number one video number two see the usb see the drive see the link whatever and it means that they can visually watch those images which i think is so much more powerful than the screenshots so these are screenshots of the images it's a lot more powerful to have the video there for them to see what that looks like live and in motion rather than having still images of of you know of video so that is something to consider what else do you want to actually provide the examiner with aside from like the, what's written here on, on you know on your thesis you will also probably be alarmed by how long your reference list is and i don't think i realized it until i actually printed it printed it out so i have about how many pages is it so 192 to about 200 so i've got about 30 pages of references which is insane but it does really help to quickly skim through the references to make sure that uh, you haven't duplicated any references you haven't like written them incorrectly they, they are in the correct order sometimes it does happen when you've got that many references that things can kind of go out of shape a little bit that you've used the right referencing style if it's harvard if it's apa whatever it is you make sure that you've kind of looked at them and you've skimmed through them and that's why this copy really helps so this copy this like mini copy of your thesis it has the reference list there and so i was able to quickly skim through that before i printed it out because one thing you'll realize is that no matter how much proofreading you do no matter how much editing you do of your thesis when you print it out and it's this big you will find a mistake 100 percent you'll find a spelling mistake you'll find a grammar you'll find a punch like there'll be something incorrect and it will frustrate you so much because you've read it so many times and so you'll think to yourself like how did i miss it but it happens and it's absolutely fine and it's not an issue at all as long as it's not like something that's factually incorrect but if it's just a, a spelling mistake or some sort of like minor error it's not a big deal but you are able to really minimize that if you print it out before you print it out for real looking at the screen and looking on paper is completely different and then you'll end up with a sheet of corrections so this is my sheet of corrections which is a, a sheet uh, or some information 
that the examiners will pass back to you saying these are the things that you need to correct before you submit your final thesis. So bear in mind that you need to reprint this, you need to rebind it and everything before you hand in for real. So I actually only had three corrections. The first one says, write a section at the end of the introduction stating the aims of your PhD. So I think I just missed that out. I didn't write down what the aims were like specifically. So that was one thing. And then I have two typos. <laughs> so the first one says page 87, it should be a capital E or something like that. And then page 172, there's a missing word between due and being. So it should be due to being. So I missed out the word too. Those are my corrections. This is very, very, very minimal. Do expect corrections like redoing experiments, thinking about like your like what you've done, your 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 discussion, thinking about your results, your stats, like redoing stats, things like like you can end up with corrections that can take another year, another six months, another few months in the lab, redoing experiments, redoing imaging, redoing like measurements. That can happen, and that's very, very normal. So don't be alarmed if you end up with a really long corrections list that requires you to kind of like rethink everything That is very normal But you can also end up with something like mine where your corrections are literally like will take you like five minutes to do So I was very privileged and very lucky to have ended up in that situation So yeah, which is why I'm kind of like passing on like my knowledge and passing on sort of the things that I did to end up in that situation And the last thing is that you'll notice that there's a lot of different chapters that are within your thesis and the numberings as well like the chapter numberings and the section numberings they're quite intricate and that was probably one of the most challenging things to do when I brought the thesis together when I was writing it and editing it so if you look at like how many chapters there are before you even get to the introduction so you've got the declaration which is saying that I believe that this work is true and it's all mine and it's all original and you actually like hand sign that you've got the abstract the impact statements talking about like why this work is actually impactful and that's more for the university to show that the research being done within the, the university is having has an impact in some aspect of the world you've got the acknowledgements which is you know you saying thank you to my mom my dad my husband my wife my my cat my dog and then you've got the table of contents which is obviously having you know which is that page that I'm reading right now and then you've got the abbreviations so you have to have an abbreviation page which like obviously is what it says you've got a list of all the abbreviations that you have and what they are in full you really really need that especially in the biological sciences where everything is abbreviated it's really important and then you've got chapter one which is your introduction and then I had 1.1 then I had 1 1 and then I had, I think I had 1.111 as well so all of those numbers really need to match so before you print and bind I I cannot recommend doing something like this like being able to see all those numbers in in a list before you come to print it and before you kind of have like everything in a hard copy like this and spending like 150 pounds on printing this and then realizing there's a mistake you might as well do something a lot easier a lot lighter like that I'm gonna call it a mini thesis or like a preliminary thesis which is basically what it is and uh, and then I've got like little I had little like labels as well like chapter labels here so I can see each chapter and just go to it and this was like my bible like I literally walked around the world like I just I traveled with it I went on the train with it on the bus with it like everything and just studied it so much and to the point where I knew that whatever I had in here was factually correct was grammatically correct and yeah clean and clear as well so yeah I hope that was helpful I hope that that gave you some insight of sort of the whole process because you know you just you, you get so caught up on writing the thesis that you don't really think what's going to happen next and you don't really think of the steps that happen next which actually can be a lot more difficult than the thesis writing itself um, so hopefully that gave you a bit of an insight of what happens when you decide to bind your thesis and um, actually one last thing the binder the thesis binders that I went to well, the one that I went to in particular was called Collis yeah Collis Bird and Withy Collis Bird and Withy limited book binders and it's based in Drayton Park, so London N5 1NU. I'll leave the link for them down below. So I went to them and I just chose them because they were on the list of approved binders of my university. So I went to UCL. If you go to the UC, well, your university website and you search for like PhD binding, 
um, services or, or, or whatever you will find a list of them and I just looked at a few of them compared their prices compared like their turnaround times and like their location and I ended up deciding on this place because I think someone had been there before that I knew from my lab can go anywhere else as well but one of the reasons why this place is listed is because they are like I guess they are familiar with UCL so they'll know what like, the color is of the book how it should be bound etc so that's why it would be on the UCL website so do check to make sure that you are going somewhere that is familiar with uni your university and that's somewhere that is kind of I guess approved by your, your university as well so it's correct all right well I hope that was like interesting even if you're not doing a th writing a thesis I hope that you found that interesting to listen to and to watch and hopefully I will catch you guys in my next video don't forget to like and subscribe to see more from me uh, and speak to you later bye